Very good. We are live. Welcome to Old Landmark Church of God in Christ. Thank you for joining this morning. We believe God is going to bless you in a great way. The children are singing, stand up and give God praise. Give God glory and give him praise. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way. So just stand up and give God some praise. God bless you. Come on in and share as you come in. Let your friends and associates know that Old Landmark is on ready for worship this morning. Worship is what we do. Worship is a part of our makeup. And we just appreciate you, our faithful listeners. Join us this morning. Thank you. We're glad to have with us our own elder Aaron Gaston, our assistant pastor. And uh, we appreciate you. And First Lady Amos is somewhere listening. And I am here with you, Pastor Bishop Amos. And we believe God for a great word today. Elder Gaston, how are you today? You're still muted, sir. Doing good, Bishop. God bless you. Great. So glad to, that you're here and pray that the Lord... We had a great time yesterday, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Windy weather and all, but we got through right. it. <laughs> Amen. And the, the, uh, the giveaway that Missionary Ed and Amos coordinated was a great success. Yeah. We, many families were blessed through the uh, materials they were able to receive. And uh, uh, I, I believe it is always a success when you do something to help God's people. Yes. And I talked to one of the young men that came named Blue Blue. And mm -hmm. uh, they, most of the people, for those that don't know, that come to this event are from the nation island of Burma. And uh, he stated that he... Uh, had children and he was glad to get toys for the children and they look forward to it every year and he spreads the word that they are there uh, but explained that a lot of the people don't speak any English and were it not for this event they wouldn't have any winter clothes yeah so I, I just want everyone to know it was a, a very successful event I'm I am sharing and I hope you all are doing the same uh, we want everyone to know that we are here, that we are uh, on the air, that we're believing God for, we believe God for great service today. And I'm trying to make sure my groups are tagged. And I just thank God that we are able to be a part of what he is doing in this season, what God is doing in this season. If you love the Lord and if you believe God is going to, is going to bless you today, why don't you go ahead and share and then uh, say hello to the saints Say hello to those that are online, those you haven't seen in a while. Take a moment and give God some glory and greet one another.
Praise God. Was I muted during that whole prayer? Yes. Well, I prayed to the Lord and he heard. God bless you. <laughs> so the guests and continue with the scripture, please. Oh, okay. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to read in your hearing uh, Matthew 16, verses uh, 24 through 28. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Gaston. And Sister Pastor, do you have any remarks before we go further? Uh, no, just want to continue to encourage everyone, amen, to, you know, hang in there and know that God is with you, amen, and uh, God is able to see us through anything and all of this. And, and um, I just, you know, as far as my own testimony, I know with everything going on, God has still been in control of my life. And uh, Jesus said, to let not your heart be troubled. When we see these things coming, we do know that there are some things to come that we're living in the last and evil days, but let not your heart be troubled. Stay in God, be, uh, be at peace in God. Uh, if, if you're not right, it's probably time to get right, amen, and be the best that you can be, amen. But uh, just stay encouraged and continue to support, amen. Amen. And indeed, that's what we want to do. We want to continue to support the church, continue to support the work of the Lord, continue to support, amen, the ministries that God has given us. Now, we do have some good news, old landmark, and to the saints in the region, to those who follow us and are part of our ministry effort, uh, we are looking to be inside our sanctuary on Sunday, October the 4th first Sunday in October, which is our annual day of, of uh, blessings, our annual day when we come as families and receive the blessing of the Lord, receive the uh, restitution of the Lord, and believe God for the great things that he has in store for us. We perform a special service every first Sunday in October, and I'm led of the Lord that this should continue this October. Of course, we will have safety features in effect to make sure that we are socially distanced and we ask everyone to wear a mask. If you come unprepared without mask, we will uh, ask you to please go and retrieve one. We will check temperatures at the door and sanitation procedures will be in effect. We want church to be a place where you can be saved and safe. I said it saved and safe and you can be both in the Lord's house. So many of you, this is the longest spell in your life that you've not been able to attend routine, regular worship services. But we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. So we encourage you to prepare yourself. There will be family group seating, amen. And we're gonna, we ask you to uh, join us at the uh, 11, I'm uh, sorry, at 12 o'clock noon. I would like for us to join at 12 o'clock noon, all right? I know we normally begin at 11 in our regular worship, but this Sunday, first Sunday in October, I'm asked, I ask you to join at 12 noon. Uh, that way we will make sure that we have amply prepared and have the things in store that we need. If you have any concerns whatsoever, you're welcome to email me at bishop at oldlandmark.com. The word bishop, B-I-S-H-O-P, at oldlandmark, O-L-D-L-A-N-D-M-A-R-K.com. 
Dr. Nan, and we want to satisfy your concerns and curiosities concerning our worship. And so again, I want to announce, I ask you to join us at 12 noon on next Sunday for our Sunday service in which we return to the sanctuary for this particular Sunday event. I believe God is going to do great things. If you have any questions or concern, don't hesitate to send me that information. Amen. Now we're going straight into the word, the word of And I believe God is going to continue to bless us in a great way. So I want you to take uh, your attention now to the book of 1 John chapter 5, and our reading will begin at verse 14. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and uh, our verses will be 1 John 5, 14, and 15. Those are the two verses that we shall read today. Hallelujah. And uh, I shall not be before you very long. It's my intention because I know that in spite of COVID, you all have things you like to do and you have plans for your day. But nonetheless, I plan to give you this word from the Lord. Everyone get your Bibles, get your instruments of your word and join me in this reading. Now, this is the confidence that we have before him. Whenever we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked him for. If we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked him for. I want to talk to you today with the simple word ask, A-S-K. Say with me, ask. Come on, say it out loud, say it out loud. Ask. For we know the scripture tells us that we have confidence full assurance, no doubt in our mind, no question that if we ask him and it's according to his will, we've already got it. All, all you all, just, all you got to do is just say the word, whatever you need, just ask, whatever you need. Now his ask and his ability to respond is not like people that you know and some of your associates that tell you, whatever you need, you just call me, especially when you've had a tragedy in the family or you've lost someone or some situation has occurred and people call you from all over. You know I'm as close as your telephone. Whatever you need, you just call me, baby, I'll be there. You know, and if all you gotta do is ask. All you gotta do is just call me. You just call me and I'll be right there. Don't try it, don't try it, don't try it, because sometimes the very one, they might mean it when they say it, but then when you do call, you know, Ben, I'm sorry, I wish I could help, but you know, Junior broke his leg. I wish I could help, but I got an issue myself. I know, well, you know, people mean well when they say what they say, but people have the weakness of inability to perform all things. But thank God for Jesus, hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus, he tells us through his word that, that if you ask according to his will, it's already done. Say with me, it's already done. Come on, Zion, it's already done. That's what you got to get in your spirit that because it is his desire to bless us, it is his desire to give us the desires of our heart, it is his desire to enhance our life and give us the abounding life and the bountiful life, the bountiful blessings, that when you have the faith to ask, he has the ability to provide. Only one catch, only one small thing. Say with me, a small thing. One small thing. The only small thing that you need to remember is when you ask in order for him to provide it, it has to be according to his will. When we say according to his will, we mean according to his plan for you, according to his design for your life and his design for the environment and the things in your world. So 
he who has the ability to see past, present, and future at the same time, the one that knows all things, will listen to your request. And when you ask, he is willing to give you whatever you ask for as long as it does not cause a ripple in the long plan of his will. Not just his will concerning you, his will concerning the world, your friends, your associates, your children, his will concerning the plan for you to be at a certain place at a certain time, his will concerning the timing that he has already set up for you to engage someone and meet someone who you will tell about the Lord and they will give their life to the Lord and perhaps have offspring that will do great works in the kingdom. So everything that God has planned is contingent. It's already an intricate system of this thing we call his will. His will, don't always think the whole world uh, surrounds about you. I had a friend who would always say, it's not all about you, uh, Copernicus. The world doesn't revolve around you. You got to be a part of the world that's evolving and revolving. God has a plan and you are in it. And as long as your will, your ask does not interfere with what he has planned for long term that affects everybody around you, affects your husband, your wife, your children, your environment, your co-worker, that person you don't know, but he's already orchestrated an encounter and you are going to present Jesus to them. They're going to receive the Holy Ghost through your prayer. They're going to get their healing through you and it's going to be an effective work for the future. Then you can have whatever you want as long as it's in his will. Now you say, well, pastor, how would I know? How would I know that what I'm asking is in his will? I, I can never be assured that because I don't know the mind of God. I can't see into the mind of God. I, I don't know what he has planned for me. You know, you don't know. Of course you don't know. So here's what you do. You, you take the Jesus lesson. You use the master teacher as the example. You use the one that has the power to change things, but instead he humbled himself to this will of God. He humbled himself to this will of the father. And the, what he did that should be an example for all of us, when he had his biggest ask, he, I said it, it's when Jesus had the biggest ask of his life. And I'm going to tell you, uh, it was big because his mother came to him when he was a young man. And, and she said, hey, they have no wine. And they're, they're running out of wine at this very important wedding that we're attending. And he said, well, what you want me to do about it? She just gave him that mama look. You know what I'm talking about. You know it, it. it's time for you to do that thing that you do. And Jesus turned the water into wine at the wedding feast in Cana. Well, he did it because it didn't interfere. It did not interfere with the long-term plan. It did not interfere with God's will. It did not interfere. And, and multiple times people have come to him uh, with a need for miracles. And out of compassion, he gave them the desires of their heart. He blessed them. He healed them. He raised the dead. Sometimes it was intentional so that the whole world would know what power he had. Other times it had nothing to do with the ultimate time clock of the world. But it simply was out of his will, out of his compassion his desire to touch and Jesus knowing all things was able to tap into the future of mankind and say that the thing you asked for I'm going to permit because it doesn't interfere with the will of the father somebody tell the Lord thank you and so when you pray sometimes and we think sometimes what we're praying for is too small to pray for and why would I bother God with this all I'm doing I, I haven't found my keys and I need my car and I need transportation. I can't afford to have a new key made. And you're praying. You say, well, Lord, I really hate to bother with you with this. There's so much going on in the world. We got political upheaval in the streets and Black Lives Matter protests and anti-protests. And, and it seems like there is a time period when the revelation, the uncovering of bad officers who have uh, killed men and women, especially people of color, uh, without any, any sense of justice coming their way. Uh, it, it just seems like this is all coming to the front and you're dealing with possibility of war between North Korea and South Korea and the United States has spread its military here and there and things are happening. Our, our, our reporters, anyone who reports something that is negative across the world, their lives are at risk. 
I know you got so much going on right now. And as much as we call Russia our enemy and China our enemy and, and North Korea our enemy, you got some people that love you even there in those places. You got some people that are serving you and you're busy protecting them. You're protecting the believers in you, those who call on your name in Pakistan and all over the world. And, and now here I'm coming about my keys. I'm coming about something that's simple, but it's important to me. And if me finding my keys does not interfere with your long-term plan for this world and for life and for the things that you need to happen, you desire to happen for man to be saved, Lord, if it's according to your will, will you please let me find my keys and guess what the Lord will do? just like that. He says, you know what? I like the way you think. I like the way you ask. I, I, I love the humility with which you come to me. You understand the enormity of my assignment, but because it's important to you, I'm going to give you. And, and I want you to have confidence when you come to me. Nothing is too small for you to ask. Nothing is too small for you to petition me. Nothing is too small for you to come to me. Have confidence. Somebody shout confidence. You've got to trust God that as long as you come with the mind that if he says yes, then you are excited and blessed. But if he has another plan, even if he turns in a different direction, you're going to assume that he did it because it did not fit his will. And Lord, as long as I'm in your will, I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. And when you have that confidence, you know. And when you ask it that way, you know that you're going to have what you need. Because the way he works is if he doesn't give you what you ask, he'll give you what you need. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. He may not give you exactly what you asked for, but watch God fix it and turn it around where he gets what he wants out of the situation and you get what you want out of the situation. And so we got to learn to do like Jesus. So Jesus had these ask in his life. People would come to him. My son, a child is sick. Pray for him. They get healed. There was a young girl and uh, they said she's sick. But they Say she's sick, and then they say she's dead. And when Jesus get there, the rumor mourners have already accumulated. They're already all over the place. And he says, "Well, I'll tell you what. Where is she? Uh, let me go so I can wake her." And and then they went from mourning to laughing, saying, "She dead. How you gonna wake her? The girl is dead." But Jesus went in there and raised her from the dead. Why did he obey? Why did he not obey? Rather, it's the wrong word. Why did he comply with the request? that this girl be healed and, and raised because it did not interfere with his ultimate plan. And as long as it's in the will of God, you can have whatever you want. So now there was another ask. They called it and said, hey, uh, this man is blind. Why is this man blind? Was he blind because of his sins or was he blind because of his parents' sin? What, why would this man be born blind? Why would God do that to him? Many times people come to you with the same thing. Well, if there's a God, why is there so much poverty? If there's a God, why is there sickness? Why is there a pandemic? If there's a God, and Jesus said, look, 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 it's not because of him, anything he did, and it's not because of anything his parents did. This particular situation, this particular blindness is so that the grace of God, the works of God can be manifest so that people who know him and have been in his environment can understand the power of God. In other words, God has foreordained this man's situation. God has foreordained that I would come through and be able to heal him so that men and women, boys and girls would spread the word that Jesus is able, that Jesus has the power. And I'm going to lead them to the Father. It's not for my glory, but it's for the glory of my Father. Somebody to tell the Lord thank you. And so Jesus was willing and able because it fits the plan of God. But I told you about he had a big ask, a real big thing. And some of you have some big things in your life, life or death things. I have a nephew that's hanging between life and death right now and from a terrible auto accident. And you don't have to know his name or his situation, but you can say, Lord, help him. Lord, turn it around. Lord, heal him. Lord, raise him up. Oh, yes. Prayer changes things. 
And there's so many others, a dear friend just lost her sister and she's grieving and in distress, perhaps wondering, Lord, what does this mean for me and her children and, and my nieces and nephews and my brother and all those that love this sister? Oh, what does it mean? Lord, we, we need a miracle of grace. We need a miracle of power and strength. I don't know if I can make it. We need a, what does it mean? And yeah, we all have something and you might have a big ask in your life something that you need God to do that is so big you know that you need to approach him just right. This is not a casual, uh, something that you have wanted or looking for, but it's the biggest thing you've ever asked God in your life. Hmm. You know what Jesus' was when it was time to fulfill his destiny as the Lamb of God, to be crucified and to die, separated from those that he loved on the earth, and to go through the things that he had to endure found himself in prayer as he felt the godliness in him, the anointing of God, uh, as he felt, you know, that deity decreasing and his humanity increasing. And he prayed and said, Father, if it be possible, we've, he's already told us that with God, all things are possible. You got that? But he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me find another way if it's possible if it's possible don't don't let me have to go through what i gotta go through don't let me have to leave my closest allies and associates these disciples that have been with me if it be possible let this cup pass and there's a lot of things in the cup but let it pass if, if it be possible we don't know how much time went through we don't know how much time went by while jesus knelt and prayed we don't know how much time and what other things he said in between, if there was anything between if it be possible and the next recorded statement. But the next statement worth recording, the next statement that was right worthy, that was worthy to be written was this, but nevertheless, somebody shout nevertheless. Are y'all talking back to me today? Nevertheless, Lord, I know what I want. I know what I've already asked you for. And if I perhaps have asked amiss, if I have asked something that doesn't fit your ultimate plan, I know how bad I want it, and I really do want it. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Come on, church, right now, lift those hands and say, Lord, your will be done. Come on, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done. Get that in your spirit. Your will be done. Because if your will is done, what I'm asking for is not even important. Because I know I'm in your will. And you're going to bless me one way or another. I know how I see it. And I know what I'm requesting. But I'm also saying your will be done. Because if your will is done, then I won't have the concerns and distresses that I believe myself to have right now. So that was the biggest ask in the earthly life of Jesus. Some say, well, maybe it's when he was on the cross. Did he ask to be taken down? Nope. In fact, he said, I, I've already overcome the issue of what I gotta go through. Even though I'm in doing it right now, I've already overcome the issue of crucifixion and the issue of the torture, the issue of the blood, the having to run from my body so that man can be saved. I could call 10,000 angels to come and rescue me, but it's not even about the rescue at this point. Hallelujah. Don't you get to a point, have you ever gotten to a resolution point that when you've asked and it didn't happen yet, but look like the thing you were asking for, the only way you saw it to turn out, turns out not to have been the only resolution. Looks like uh, you're surviving in spite of it. Looks like you're surviving and didn't think you would. The thing that you thought would be your end uh, was a previous chapter in your life. And you thought that when you asked God and you were waiting and you were patient, you're waiting on God to do it. But you thought that if it didn't happen the way you asked, that would be the end of blessing, the end of joy in your life. But you found out that, you know what, I, I waited and I, I was waiting on it. 
And I said, nevertheless, your will be done. And while I was waiting on your will to come through, while I was waiting, you worked it out so much that, Lord, you don't even have to worry about what I asked for because you found a provision, which means to me that it wasn't in your will, but you didn't have a problem with my request, so you satisfied it another way. Thank you, Lord, for another way. Somebody say, thank you for another way. Come on, thank you for another way. We don't fully understand the will of God, but we have to have confidence that he knows who we are and that he knows we are his. Confidence that he knows that the desires of our heart are consistent with his will. And if they're not consistent, he is going to bless us in a way that's consistent with his plan for me and his plan for those in my life. Oh, somebody put a praise in the atmosphere right there. I believe that's praiseworthy. How about you? I believe it's praiseworthy because it lets us know that you're not forgotten, that he's going to supply your every need according to his riches and glory. That's whatsoever things you desire when you pray for, believe that you receive them, hallelujah, and you shall have them that you can ask, and if you ask according to his will, he is going to make it happen in a way that fits his plan and your plan. And if you ask amiss, if you ask outside of his will, you won't get it, but you won't be penalized for asking. You won't be punished for asking. He will not criticize you for asking because he already said you ask me anything. Hallelujah. Ask me anything. Somebody shout anything. Hallelujah. And I believe that as we ask him, he is going to give us the desires of his heart. I want you to think now about something you need from the Lord. Think about something you want God to do in your life something you desire from the Lord. And I want you to know that he is able to give you the desires of your heart. But as you prepare to, prepare to ask, I want you to make sure you ask in his will. And everyone, bring to the forefront of your mind the one thing you need from God more than anything else, the one thing you need him to do, or just something that's important to you, something that is significant and you believe will give you a little more peace and a little more joy in the earth if the Lord were to perform it for you. And together we're gonna to ask him. We're gonna ask in agreement and we're gonna believe God for it. Dear Lord and Father, we ask in your name. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your healing. We ask for your deliverance. We ask for power. We ask for grace, whether it be for new job, new increase, funding, finance, new home, new car, or something even more important, healing in our body, salvation for our children, judicial justice in our land. Lord, we ask. We ask for a miracle. We ask for victory. We ask for power. And we know what we want. We know what we desire. But we've learned from our big brother, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We ask what we ask, but we also add that nevertheless, if it be possible. Lord, nevertheless, we know what we want, but nevertheless, your will be done. Your will be done. Come on, say it with me. Your will be done. Your will be done. Because I trust your will. Your will be done. Because I honor your will. Your will be done. Because you could see further than I see. You can know more than I know you. You have all knowledge and all power. And I just am excited to be a part of your plan. So, Lord, nevertheless, your will be done. And if you mean it, come on, give God a your will be done praise. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, bless him, church. Lord, your will be done. Put it in your spirit. Lord, your will be done. I, I know what I want. I know what I've asked, but your will be done. I know what I desire, but your will be done. I know what I seek, but your will be done. I know what I'm calling for, but your will be done in the name of Jesus. 
and we praise you for it and say amen and amen. Everybody put a praise right there. Come on, put a praise right there. I need everybody to put a praise right there. Come on, put a praise right there. Because we're going to believe God and we're going to be consistent with the scripture, trusting in the Lord in all things, giving God praise and giving him glory, believing that we can ask. God bless you. The subject today has been asked. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you, even as it has been to me. We're going to ask in faith. We're going to ask trusting God for all things. I'm going to do the same right now. I ask that each of you bring God an offering, bring God a gift to support this work, this telecast, to support this internet service, and to support our church so that we would be in position to win souls for Christ and to touch the lives of his people, whether Muslim, whether of our race, of our creed, of our denomination. All souls are yours. And we ask for the ability to bless them with measure that you give to us. Everyone give your best gift right now. Bring the Lord your tithe. We give by way of Givelify or by way of the cash app. If you have a gift, but you're unable to use the media and you're unsure, or you have a gift that needs to be picked up and you're in the city of Fort Wayne, uh, you can certainly email me at bishop at oldlandmark.com or call one of the officers of the church and they will arrange for your gift to be received. But we just trust God that everybody's going to give something. Everyone, whether you're listening to the service live or if you're going to follow up and listening on your job or listening, uh, whenever you hear this appeal, please respond to it with a gift. Please respond to it with your tithe and with your offering, especially if you're members of the church. And we will continue to do what God has given us to do. Today, all we did was talk about ask. If you've been blessed, let me know you've been blessed. Let me know you have been touched. Everybody give something to the Lord as we praise God, as we bless God. Thank you so much, so many of you. I believe you're giving to the grace of God. Thank you again for your patience. That's right, thank you. I see you, I see your response. Thank you for your love and for your grace. Thank you for your kindness and how you have helped to support this work. And I believe God is gonna to continue to do great things in you. Thank you, Sister Dunbar, thank you. Sister Malone, God bless you, thank you. Mother Gaskin, thank you, thank you. Sister Davina, thank you. Pastor Aaron, Sister Deidre Baker, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Mother Lockhart. Oh, God bless you. We pray God's blessing on you. Mother Barbara Hutchinson Lockhart, I know this is a hard day for you and you took time to share with Old Landmark, be in our service today at the loss of your sister. And uh, I honor you, I love you so much for it. I'll be in touch very soon. Thank you, Sister Lee, Sister Stevens. Amen. Thank you, Sister Carla. God bless you, my friend, Carla Terrell. Thank you, Sister Brown. Oh, appreciate you. Amen. Each of you that are here. Correct, Karen. Thank you. Ask. Watch God bless you. Watch God turn it around. Ask in his will. And you know how to do it now. Add that nevertheless. Ask what you want, and you don't have to do nevertheless right away. Take a little time, let a little pause go in between. Mull over, think about it, ask and wait. But you know God, you know him, you know his love. Always come back and say, but nevertheless, not my will, your will, your will be done. God bless you, amen, we're through, I think. I believe the will of God has been done and the word of God has been presented. Let me add this, if you're not saved, you wanna know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. You wanna ask him to turn your life around. You wanna ask him to forgive you of your sins. You ask him to bring a miracle into your life. All things are possible to them that believe. Have confidence 
that he is able to keep you, that he is able to turn your life around. And we're going to pray with you right now. Dear Lord, our Father, I pray for these that are seeking a closer walk with you. Pray for these that have heard the word but want to have that confidence that they can ask. And I pray, God, that you would speak to their hearts right now, wherever they are in this world, that you would speak to their hearts and minds and let them know that you are God and with you are all things are possible. So, God, I pray that you allow them to have the courage to enter into the faith. Give them the courage to say these words and to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior, and I want to give my life to you. And I believe that you are the Christ, son of the living God, raised from the dead, and you're coming back again. And I thank you for saving me. Say it again. Thank you for saving me. Say it with your own mouth. Thank you for saving me. And if you prayed that prayer, prayed it in confidence, and have the faith that God has done it, guess what? You are saved. You are the ones he's talking to when he says, ask and you shall receive. Thank you. Would you email me? Let me know what God has done for you. Bishop at oldlandmark.com. Just send me an email, a text. I gave my life to the Lord today. I received a blessing today. I was anointed through the word today. Send me that text and let me rejoice with you. God bless you. We thank you. I don't want you to miss tonight. Phenomenal meeting tonight at 6 o'clock, our worship service at 6 o'clock at this same spot on Facebook Live, at the same spot, the Bishop Live service, the Bishop Amos Live service will take place. We're talking to leaders in their 50s about reimagining church and how they see it now. How will church look after 2020? How will church look when the first wave of COVID has passed and how will we operate? What will we do? What do we need to change? What do we need to modify as the Lord has pushed us into another era of church and ministry? I want you to join us tonight at six o'clock at the same spot and join with uh, two evangelist missionaries who are also uh, pastors in their own right, working in their local churches as co-pastors or assistant pastors, as well as two uh, elders, one who is an assistant pastor to his father, amen, the bishop designated, and the other who is also a, an elder and minister in the gospel. So I, I believe it's going to be in a pastor and an overseer of a territory uh, in uh, one of the island countries. God is going to bless in a great way. You don't want to miss tonight to hear the thoughts and minds of leaders in their 50s concerning the future. God bless you. You've been patient with me, so I'm going to leave you now, but I'll see you at 6 o'clock. Pray for me. And I'll pray for you.